Okay, so in this video, uh, what we'll do is we'll go through how to set up um, an interface in FL Studio 20 um, to completely control the Roland TR8 drum machine. Uh, so as you can see here, I've created a um, control surface um, user interface for my TR8. So if I just hit play on the drum machine, you can see on the actual control surface, because I've got it linked up through MIDI, I can control the various parameters on the drum machine. So if we just stop that, um, what we'll do is we'll go through this from scratch. And by the time you've watched this video, you should be able to confidently uh, understand a little bit of MIDI implementation and be able to con set up a control surface um, for your TR8. So if we go to new, and what we're going to do is just have a look at the MIDI interface. So I have got, if we go to MIDI settings, uh, a UM1, uh, which is a Roland USB to MIDI interface. And um, don't bother going for cheap um, MIDI interfaces that you can get off Amazon for about a £10. Um, or what would that be, about $13. Um, you're better off going for a more expensive uh, well-known branded cable that way you won't have any problems with synchronization or sending system exclusive MIDI messages so I've just got this uh, plugged into the input of the TR8 and we're not going to bother with the output because we're just going to control the TR8 from sort of like a studio kind of recording perspective we're not doing anything live on the TR8. We just want to purely control it and have full uh, control from the uh, R door, or in this case, um, FL Studio 20. So once you've got your MIDI hardware set up, we can then go and add a MIDI channel. So if we go to add a channel, go to MIDI out, um, I've got my TR8 set up on channel 7 and if we remember from our MIDI settings we've got a hardware on COM port 1 or port 1 so we're just going to set that so if we um, whoops, bring up the MIDI implementation chart uh, that you can get from the Roland website Uh, we can see uh, that for the control changes uh, here, let's go for something simple. Let's go for, uh, let's see at the bottom here, uh, let's bring it up a bit. We've got the ride symbol tune, which is, and I hate it when I don't put the lines in, 86. So in Fruity Loops, we want on our MIDI out, this first knob to be ride symbol, let's capitalize it, ride symbol tune, and then the control is 86. So th this is just the name. This is just so we know we can refer to it. So the actual controller, the MIDI controller, leading back to the drum machine is on controller 86. So we want it on channel seven because that's what my drum machine is set to. And the range we want in MIDI um, uh, usually a knob is uh, 128 steps which starts at 0 so we have 0 to 127 if we wanted to limit this for some reason we can put it just to 50 um, but there is no point doing that we might as well have the full range on the controller and then accept that so if we hit play and let's just uh, whilst we've got and the kit, uh, hand clap so if we go to the, just check that that's working. Okay, so that's successfully linked in. So then let's just stop that. If we now go to our effects panel, I always like to put my control surfaces on the master channel, but you can put them on any one of these insert channels if you, if you like. 
So on our master channel for slot one, we are going to add a control surface. So this is where you can basically build the GUI or the uh, user interface to make it represent whatever MIDI device you are configuring. So let's do an example for the TR8. So if we hit the span aside and add a knob, let's move that knob there. And what we'll do is we'll right click and rename it to Ride Symbol Tune, as it states on the drum machine. And then let's link this knob to the MIDI controller. So if we, in the MIDI out uh, channel box, go to link to controller, we want to link it to an, ex an internal controller. So we want it to be surface, controller surface, and then ride symbol tune. And it's as simple as that. We don't need to touch the MIDI controller because that's if we were using it direct um, to MIDI. So accept that. Now we need to link, um, that's done. So if we take it out of the maintenance mode or the spanner mode, if I adjust this here, it will also adjust this here. So if we play again on the TR8, you'll see that it tunes the ride symbol on the actual TR8. Um, just a word of warning though, if you do adjust this knob in the MIDI out channel, you'll find that the link is broken between that and the control surface. So all we do to link it back in is just right click, uh, link to controller and just hit OK again. And then that's it, that's connected back. I don't know why it does that, maybe it's something worth looking into. Um, but that's that knob now assigned to that um, MIDI controller and out to the TR8. So let's just stop that for a brief second. So then if we now go to the spanner again, add another control surface, this time a slider. And then let's call this uh, ride symbol level. Okay, so we need on the MIDI out um, to configure another controller. Uh, so let's call this ride symbol level. And if we look at MIDI implementation, the ride symbol level is 88. So if we call that 88, what we should do really is add the ride decay because that's sort of the next controller, that's controller 87. But let's skip to 88 because we want to give you an example of a slider. So the controller here is 88. The range again is similar to a knob. So all the way down is zero, all the way up is 127. And then the channel is obviously the channel that your MIDI device is on. Mine's on seven. Okay to that. Then what we want to do is on the surface control, come out of spanner and go to, uh, no we don't. We want to do it on the MIDI out. We want to link our MIDI out to an internal controller in FL Studio. Uh, which is the ride symbol level, except that. And then that should, yep, link to that. So if we hit play, there we go. We've got control of the ride symbol and the tune there. Let's just stop that. Okay, so also on the TR8, we have buttons. So we have a button for the scatter effect mode. So this would be, if we add a control onto the surface, the control surface, it would be a button. Let's just move it here and make it a little bit bigger. And let's call that, um, let's just call it on for now. And then if we go to properties, caption, let's put it to on on there. So if we go back to the MIDI implementation, uh, the scatter switch, is and this is why why, do, why they don't put lines or a grid on this so the scatter switch here is 70. so if we go back to fruity loops we need another controller we need to configure it so let's call it scatter or let's just call it uh yeah let's call it scatter switch uh on 70 scatter switch 70 it's controller 70 and again each channel seven except that 
So then we'll link this to um, surface on the internal controller, except that. So what happens with a button, it will either go from zero, whoops, let's just take it out of spanner mode, from zero to 127, depending whether it's on or off. Now what you can do with your buttons is adjust the style. So if we go to pad, let's take it out of spanner mode. Let's try a different one where we can see that it's definitely on or off. This is just something that you can play with, play around with to your heart's content. So if we go for light green pad, let's have a look. That's a bit better. So you can see this, the scatter switch control knob here is going 127 on and zero off. So if you look at the TR8 in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that's going on and off. Um, let's just do one more just to get the hang of it. And let's do the scatter knob. Uh, so if we go to spanner, we'll add a knob and this time we'll make it quite big and we'll plop it there. And then on here, if we go back to our media implementation, if we look, our scatter type is on control change 68. So if we um, configure this, oops, let's call it scatter type. 68. You can call these whatever you want, but I like to be quite structured, especially when I'm giving demonstrations. Accept that. And then let's just on the control surface rename that to scatter. Is it scatter type? No, it's just scatter on the <coughs> front of the TR8. So if we link this to link to controller, internal controller, scatter except whoops keep forgetting to take it out of uh, spanner mode you can see the scatter type sort of changes at certain points so when it gets to so it's on at zero it's on type one when it gets up to about eight it plops over to two and then it goes to three around about the 20 ish mark but as long as you can automate this within FL Studio, there's not gonna be much of a problem. So that is the basic principle of configuring uh, control changes on your MIDI out or MIDI channel to your MIDI device and then controlling these via a control surface. So it looks a lot better, uh, the GUI is a lot better. So if we go back and open uh, this project I've got going at the moment, you can see this looks a lot like the front panel of the TR8. And what you can also do is if you go to tools and go to control creator, you can, to your heart's content, um, edit and make your own knobs, um, buttons and sliders so that, you know, I've tried to make this look as similar as possible to the front of the TR8. So if we just have one more demonstration, if I hit play. Keep forgetting I've got everything turned up. Obviously you can have a lot of fun adjusting these within. Uh, there's nothing to shuffle at the moment. Uh, just stop that you can have a lot of fun playing um, your MIDI device um, through your door once you've got it configured up, uh, configured properly. Uh, so uh, this is a work in progress. It'll be finished very shortly. So this is basically a work in progress. If uh, you subscribe and hit the notification button to this channel, and then you leave a message in the comments section, I will contact you back. And if you want the uh, FL Studio project for this um, uh, control surface interface for the TR8, uh, I'll happily send it to you. Uh, and like I said, uh, please subscribe and thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I'll be posting more videos in the future.